Being in a relationship after infidelity is not easy. However, sometimes you can get through it if you're transparent with one another. As far as your cell phone is concerned, I know that's a little, you know, extreme. However, it's really important to be extreme when it comes to trying to rebuild your relationship after infidelity. <music> So much for joining me today on this episode of Love and Focus, your healthy guide to relationships. I'm Mel, your host, and today we're going to be discussing five ways to rebuild trust after infidelity. I'm also going to be reading a letter from an individual who wants advice on rebuilding trust in that relationship after the trust was broken. I'm going to be reading your weekly juicy horoscopes, and I'm also going to be giving you some insight on my final thoughts coming up. Infidelity. Now we know that that refers to the act of being unfaithful while you're in a committed relationship, whether that's sexual, physical, emotional, spiritual. I mean, infidelity comes in several forms and I'm going to make you aware of some of them and why it happens. Physical infidelity is engaging in sexual activity other than being with your partner. Okay. We have emotional infidelity, which will cause an individual to talk to someone else and release some of those feelings that they have inside and then become emotionally attached to someone else. I consider that to be infidelity as well. And then we also have online infidelity, which is when individuals go online, they use their social media platforms, and that's when they start to uh, send pictures or send messages to an individual that is not their partner. So those forms of infidelity can definitely take a toll on relationships once the other individual finds out. Now I'm going to tell you a couple of reasons why infidelity usually happens in relationships. Infidelity can stem from several factors. Just to name a few, it could be dissatisfaction in your relationship emotionally and physically. Now, if your partner is no longer emotionally or physically attracted to you, that could be one of the reasons why they go astray, whether it be a man or a woman. This is the reason why you have to make sure that that communication is up to par because you want to be able to communicate your feelings to your partner and have them receive them in a way where they're understanding what you are saying. Opportunity and temptation can lead you to situations that will cause infidelity in your marriage if you're not careful with these temptations that are out there. A lot of individuals want to know if they still have what it takes. So they go out there with their friends and everything like that. And some people, they flirt with others or they see others flirting with them. That's a temptation. All right. And if you are loyal, stay as far away as you can from those temptations so that way you won't be triggered to do anything that you shouldn't be doing and then cause a ruckus in your relationship. Personal issues such as low self-esteem, feeling depressed, feeling lonely and sad can also lead to infidelity and not just the person who's feeling lonely and sad. Your partner can cheat because he notices that you are depressed. You, you're always stuck in your room. You're lonely. Only. You're never out, you know, you're never out with him or her. You always want to be secluded by yourself. So this, this is another reason why infidelity occurs. So you have to really pay attention to this and communicate to your partner that this is the way that you're feeling. So that way you two can work on that without having to go through that whole infidelity and then the relationship will definitely be broken and so will your spirit. So you have to communicate to your partner, yes, this is what I need, this is how I'm feeling, and this is what I want. Relationship breakdown, all right? So in relationships, after infidelity occurs, the breakdown, oh, there's no trust, there's no um, emotional connection anymore. You feel like you are all alone and you have nowhere to turn to because the person that you trusted the most breached that trust. So when infidelity occurs, it, it's very hard to 
be that same jolly person that you were in the relationship. Now you're really into, you, you really get deep down and depressed and you're sad and you're anxious and you just don't know what's going on. So rebuilding that trust after infidelity, we know that that is a challenge. And if you take your time and take steps, it may work if that's what you and your partner want to do. And it has to be the both of you working on this relationship together, not just one trying to fix it. It has to be the both of you. Okay, so now let's talk about five ways that you can rebuild trust after infidelity. You have to have open and honest communication. You have to inform your partner of why this took place and why you couldn't come and talk to that individual about some of the things that you were feeling. You have to understand that infidelity is not easy on either party. And I know that when individuals go out there and cheat, sometimes they don't mean to cheat. It's just something that happened. However, you have to find out from your partner why this happened. And you have to get your partner to tell you why it happened and explain to them that if they would have came to you and communicated these feelings in the first place, you could have worked on this whole situation before it even led down that path of infidelity. The next thing that you have to do is seek help. Don't be afraid to go to counseling just because uh, people may shun you, you know. No, you go to counseling and you focus on you guys as a whole. And even if you have to go to individual counseling, you can do that as well, which I think is a good idea because sometimes you want to let these things out and that your partner want to let these things out. And then you come together with a therapist and let that individual be the mediator and explain, you know, exactly what you both are feeling in a way where you'll understand it. Because sometimes when you're sitting at home and you're talking, individuals don't listen to one another because the tension is so high. So if you go to a therapist and you let them be that facilitator, they will be able to explain exactly what you are trying to say. And that may help you. The third thing that you need to do is establish transparency. Okay. Now, if you want your partner to trust you and if you want to trust your partner, you have to sit down and have a conversation about what transparency looks like to you and they'll explain what transparency looks like to them. Okay, so you have to really be transparent and say, this is what I want from here on. How do you feel about that? What do you want? And always make sure that you listen to one another. Make sure that you are hearing what that person is saying and that they're hearing what you're saying as well. Because being in a relationship after infidelity is not easy. However, sometimes you can get through it if you're transparent with one another. As far as your cell phone is concerned, I know that's a little, you know, extreme. However, it's really important to be extreme when it comes to trying to rebuild your relationship after infidelity. So no more hiding your passwords, no more flipping your phone upside down, no more taking calls outside or in another room. You have to be transparent and you have to let that person in on what you're doing, where you're going, especially at the beginning of this whole infidelity um, crisis that you'll be going through, you have to let them in at the beginning, okay? Especially at the beginning. It's really important to understand that. Fourth thing is you have to set clear boundaries, okay? You have to let them know, okay, I'm not going to take your freedom away from you. However, these are the things that I need you to understand when you go out with your friends or when you're hanging out with your family members. These are the things that I need you to understand, okay? No getting girls' phone numbers in your phone. No texting individuals. No um, sending DMs to somebody that you think is cute. No uh, I can't say no eye contact with anyone out in the street. However, you know what you're supposed to be doing if we're setting boundaries. So you have to let your partner know what boundaries you want to set. I can't tell you what boundaries to set, but you can tell them what boundaries to set and you can let them tell what boundaries they want to be set. 
you can't just let this be a one way thing because we don't want to crucify the individual who uh, cheated. We want to try to rebuild the relationship. So you have to find out why you have to set your boundaries. You have to be transparent. Fifth thing that you need to do is show consistent actions. And what I mean by that is if you say you are going to be home at six o'clock, then you need to be home at 559, six o'clock or 601. Okay. You want to keep rebuilding that trust. So if you don't show these consistent actions, then your partner is going to be thinking otherwise, and you don't want that. So if you say you're going to call, call. If you say I'm going to text, text. You know, if you say I'm going to the store, I'll be back in 10 minutes, then that's what you need to do. Your actions have to be consistent and they have to be positive. You don't want your partner to not trust you when you're just going out to the gym and you know that it's going to take you an hour. Tell them where you're going. Tell them what time you'll be back. You know, you want to rebuild all of that trust. You don't want to have this lingering over your relationship for so long. You have to work on it, whether it be showing your consistent actions, being transparent, setting your boundaries, uh, consider counseling and having clear communication. Okay. Open and clear communication. Both partners must be willing to work on this relationship to move forward past this infidelity phase that you guys have gone through, okay? If one person is not working on it as hard as the other person, then it's going to feel like you're on a scale and you're at the bottom and the other person is at the top. So you must work on it together in order to move forward positively. I think that that is uh, one of the main things in the relationship that you have to do is work together on it. Both partners must be willing to make this work, okay? It shouldn't just be one-sided. Both of you should be involved in taking the steps necessary in order to rebuild after infidelity occurs. So I'll be reading a letter from an individual who's seeking advice on how to rebuild trust in their relationship after their marriage trust was breached. Coming up. Okay, so I'm going to be reading a letter from an individual who wants advice on how to rebuild the trust in their marriage. Oh boy, dear Mel, my name is Sherry and I'm writing to you from Buffalo, New York, seeking your advice and guidance during a difficult time in my life. I have been married to my husband for 10 years and we have two wonderful children together. Recently, I discovered that my husband has been unfaithful and has fathered a child with another woman. Ooh. This revelation has left me heartbroken, confused, and unsure of what steps to take next. My priority has always been the well-being of my children, but I am struggling to navigate this situation. I am torn between my feelings of betrayal and the need to maintain a stable environment for my kids. I don't know how to move forward and could use your insight and support. Thank you for taking the time out to read my letter. I look forward to your response. Sincerely, Sherry from Buffalo, New York. Wow. Okay. Hi, Sherry. First of all, I am sorry for what you're going through. And I know that this is um, not a great time for you in your marriage. Um, I'm going to give you some opinions. And these are just my opinions and some thoughts on some of the steps that you can take in order to um, get around and navigate this infidelity that occurred in your relationship. The first thing that you need to do is really ask yourself, do I? I want to proceed with this marriage. Do you feel like you're confident enough to continue? And when I say confident, I mean, do you have it in you to hear the information that your partner is about to tell you, for, you know, the reasons why infidelity occurred in the first place? Do you have it in you to understand that sometimes it's not your fault Sometimes it's not their fault. So you have to think about these things. And this is where that effective communication comes in. You have to sit down with your partner and discuss the reasons why. Why did you do this? Was it something that I did? What could I have done better? Or why did you do this? Is it something that you did? 
Or is it something that he could have done better? So you have to ask these questions and sit down. And when you're discussing it, be transparent about the way that you feel about this whole situation, because it's always two sides to a story. And when you sit down and hear the reasons why, you may understand why it occurred. I'm not saying that you have to accept it, but you may understand why it happened in the first place, because sometimes the individual that did cheat may feel lonely and um, abandoned and their feelings emotionally is not connecting with yours any longer. And you have to really sit down and discuss these reasons and discuss why this may have happened. Okay. The second thing is you can also seek counseling. Sometimes having that third party to facilitate your feelings or your partner's feelings may actually help you understand why these things occurred. And, and it doesn't always have to be, um, I guess, couples counseling at first. You may want to go to an individual counseling. He may want to go to individual counseling. And then you guys come together and go to a couple's counseling. You know, it's sometimes it's better when you could speak to this individual or your counselor and explain your feelings and then have your husband go and speak to somebody, let him explain his feelings. And then you guys come together and be able to talk about it with this individual to facilitate it and explain it in a way where you both will understand it and you both will hear it. Another thing that you can do is make sure that you set boundaries. You can't be hanging out late with your friends no longer. You have to let me know when you're coming home and who who you're hanging with. I mean, it's a little extreme, but these are some of the things that you may have to do. And your husband, as the one who went out and he was unfaithful, needs to understand this is the way that you're feeling at this time. And these are some of the things that you need to help you move forward and to help you become a little bit more comfortable with him going out and um, coming back and, you know, letting you know what time he's going to get back. It's not easy. However, he he needs to understand that this is how you're feeling. And this, these are some of the things that you want. You also want transparency from him and you have to give him transparency when you're having conversations because sometimes it's like, you know, you, you're talking and you're going around the bush. However, you have to be transparent and let them know straight up. These are the things that I want. And these are the things that I think I deserve after infidelity occurs. You also have to have clear and concise answers when you ask a question. It shouldn't be a short yes or a short no. OK, and he may get upset because you're asking so many questions and you're like, where you going, who you're going with. But these are some of the things that you're going to need to know in order to help you move on. OK, and, you know, turning uh, his cell phone over or um Walking out the door when he gets a phone call, that's a no-no, okay? You have to make sure that when he is uh, taking calls, and he has to make sure that when he's taking calls, that he doesn't make you feel insecure when it's happening, okay? So these are some of the things that you have to think about. And as far as the baby is concerned, um, the baby didn't ask to be here, and I don't think that anything should be taken out on that child that um, came from this whole infidelity. You know, I don't think that the child should be used in the relationship as um, a negative. So these are some of the boundaries that you have to set. If you're going to take your partner or your husband back, these are some of the things that you have to let them know. I don't want you going over there visiting the baby with the mom. I believe that the mom should drop that baby off to a, a location where the both of you are and the baby gets in a car and then you bring that baby to your house. If you are able to handle that, I know that is not going to be easy right from the beginning. And this is the reason why you have to take baby steps to get to that point. If you say, hey, you know what, I'm not ready to accept your child yet, then that's just the way that you feel. And that's what you have to be transparent about when trying to rebuild this trust. 
Okay, but like I said, the baby didn't ask to be here. It's not the baby's fault. And if you're going to accept your husband, then you're going to have to accept the baby as well. So these are some of the things that you have to think about. Now you have children. You don't want your children to see any negative behaviors or know that the dad was unfaithful because these children that you have can be affected emotionally, socially, academically, and in future relationships. So you have to try to keep this information, you know, down. You got to try to keep this information uh, to yourself with your husband. And you guys have to have these conversations on the low. And it really depends on how old your children are. If they're old enough to understand what mommy and daddy are going through, if you decide to split up, then that's when you would discuss, you know, mom and dad are going to separate for some time. You know, we're not getting along at the moment. However, we still do love each other and we still love you guys as well. So anything that mom and dad are going through is not going to affect you in any way way. We still love you. And that's what you are going to have to reiterate over and over again to your children. So that way they don't think that is their fault that you guys are splitting up. It's really important to establish that clear communication and let them know that you are still uh, their parents and that you guys still love them to the fullest, okay? Because you don't want your child to uh, be secluded in a room or feel depressed or feel sad, anxious, or angry because of what you guys are going through, all right? Uh, children are smarter than we think, so... They see your facial expressions. They see your reactions to questions that your husband may ask. They see the reaction of your husband when you're telling him something. So I hope that helps, Sherry. And I'm sorry for what you're going through. Try some of these techniques and I hope that they work for you. Counseling works for a lot of individuals as well as couples. So try to seek some counseling. Support your partner and like ask him why he did these things and you know you demand these answers okay and these are all just my opinions and I hope that it really helps you so Sherry I wish you well and um you know please take care of yourself and take care of your family okay so I am going to be reading your weekly juicy horoscopes coming up. All right. So I am going to be reading your weekly juicy horoscopes. And we are going to start with Leo because it is Leo season. So, all right. So Leo, July 23rd to August 22nd. Mm. Passion and romance are in the air for you. All right, Leo. Plan a grand gesture or a romantic outing to show your partner how much you care. Now, singles... Your confidence will draw potential partners, so put yourself out there and shine brightly, all right? Shine bright like a diamond, just like Rihanna said, you better shine. All right, so Virgo, you're next. August 23rd to September 22nd, all right, this is me, I'm a Virgo. So focus on communication and clarity in your relationships this week. Virgo, address any misunderstandings and work towards mutual understanding. Singles, Pay attention to details and look for someone who appreciates your meticulous nature. All right. Libra, September 23rd to October 22nd. Oh, harmony and balance are your priorities this week, Libra. Plan a peaceful and romantic date to strengthen your bond with your partner. Singles, your diplomatic nature will attract potential partners who value fairness and beauty. Okay, Scorpio, Ooh, October 23rd to November 21st. Now, intensity and passion characterize your relationships this week, Scorpio. Dive deep into emotional connections and explore your desires with your partner. Singles, someone intriguing may enter your life, sparking a deep and passionate connection. Sounds good. Sagittarius, November 22nd to December 21st. Adventure and excitement await you this week, Sagittarius. Plan an adventurous date or try something new with your partner. Singles, your love for exploration will attract like-minded individuals who share your zest for life. 
That sounds so cute. Capricorn, all right, December 22nd through January 19th. This week, focus on long-term goals and stability in your relationships, Capricorn. Discuss future plans with your partner and work towards mutual objectives. Singles, seek someone who shares your ambitions and values. Aquarius, January 20th through February 18th. Intellectual connections are highlighted this week, Aquarius. Engage in stimulating conversations and explore new ideas with your partner. Singles, your unique perspectives and originality will attract potential partners who appreciate your individuality. Hmm. Pisces, February 19th through March 20th. Emotional depth and empathy are your strength this week, Pisces. Use them to connect deeply with your partner and understand their needs. Singles, someone who resonates with your emotional and spiritual nature may come into your life. Yeah, go Pisces. All right, Aries, March 21st through April 19th. This week brings an exciting energy to your love life. Ooh. If you're in a relationship, plan something spontaneous to reignite the spark. Singles, an unexpected encounter might lead to a promising connection. Stay open and embrace the thrill of new beginnings. That sounds good. All right, get them new beginnings going, Aries. All right, so Taurus, April 20th through May 20th. Focus on building stability and trust in your relationships this week. Communicate openly with your partner about your needs and expectations. Singles should take a slow and steady approach to new relationships, ensuring a strong foundation. Wow. I agree 100%. I think I like that one the best because ensuring a strong foundation is definitely key to a healthy relationship, you know? All right. So we're going to hit Gemini, May 21st through June 20th. Your charm and wit are at their peak this week, Gemini. Use this to your advantage in both romantic and social settings. Couples should engage in deep, meaningful conversations. Singles, this is a great time to meet new people and expand your social circle. Yeah, Gemini. Cancer, June 21st to July 22nd. Emotional bonds are strengthened this week. Spend quality time with your partner and express your feelings openly. For singles, a nurturing and caring approach will attract someone who appreciates your emotional depth. Well, with these horoscopes, individual experiences may vary. I mean, it differs for everyone. Sometimes when you hear your horoscope being called out, it's like, are they talking to me? Because I need to hear that right now at this moment, whether you're in a relationship or you're single. Sometimes these horoscopes hit right on the nose and you'd be like, yep, that's what I'm supposed to hear. So I'm going to be giving you some valuable insights in my final thoughts coming up. So in my final thoughts, I'm just going to recap a little bit of what we discussed about infidelity. Now, we know that it takes baby steps in order for both parties to proceed and, you know, move forward positively in their relationship after infidelity occurs. So step by step clear and concise, being transparent, having open and honest communication, setting your boundaries, sometimes going, seeking counseling, going to therapy may help. And all of these are just little baby steps to help you overcome this infidelity. And when children are involved, we know that is not easy, whether it be child that man fathered while he was unfaithful, or the children that you and the unfaithful partner have together. So setting clear boundaries, effective communication, being transparent, making sure that your actions are consistent and you are you're able to communicate these things to your partner and they understand what you're saying. These are some really important steps to take, especially when you're trying to rebuild that trust. So seeking general help is also a good way to achieving that goal of a successful marriage after infidelity. Now, if you and your partner feel that it's not fixable, 
those are some of the things that you also need to talk about and try to move forward in a positive direction so that way your children won't become affected by the decisions that were made negatively in your marriage. Okay, we always have to think about the children and make sure you think about the well-being of yourself as well. You know, self-care, prioritize after this happens, whether it be you're the in, the one that chose to cheat or were, whether you were the one that got cheated on. Okay. Self-care, prioritize yourself, take some time for yourself. It's not going to be easy healing after this uh, takes place. However, it can be done. Time heals a lot of wounds. I don't know if it heals all, but it does heal a lot of wounds. Of course, you're still going to have that memory of um, infidelity and your trust may go out the window and, you know, all of these things may occur. However, you take time for yourself to rebuild it within you. And if you and your partner want to stay together, take time to rebuild together. Okay. So hopefully this helped. And if you found any value in this uh, podcast, please like, share, comment, let me know what you think. Um, leave some suggestions for Sherry and others that may be going through this because Sherry you're not the only one that's going through this right now. However, uh, there's individuals out there that can leave comments that can help you get through it because they've already gone through it. Okay, so see you next time on Love and Focus. Thank you for joining. Bye. Oh my goodness, I love my flowers. They just keep poking me. These are so cute. I'm trying to change my set every so often, but when I found these flowers, I fell in love with them. So I decided to keep them as well as my little teddy bear, Love. We got him um, several years ago on Valentine's Day, and he's been chilling with me ever since. So thank you, Love. And we call him Love because he is a love. He's so cute.